This is one of my favorite tools in the kitchen is one of these little, you know, cake testers here. You know, you can just kind of poke right in and if it's really hard to push through, then you know it needs to cook a little bit longer. Or you need to go to the gym. Or you need to go, yeah. <laughs> All right, Chef Ray Garcia, Broken Spanish in downtown LA. Why does that name of your restaurant fit you guys so well? Once you come into Broken Spanish, when you sit down and you feel the, the decor, the, the warmth, the familiarity, you taste the food. You, you can tell that there is Latin and, and, and Mexican roots to it of my you know, upbringing as a Mexican-American here in the city. So how do, you, how do you start out here? So you've got the... So we have these, these Okinawa sweet potato. Unlike other sweet potatoes, they have a nice floral note to them and we poach it in water and uh, piloncillo, a cane sugar. It has a, a, a nice, you know, subtle sweetness to it, um, but we didn't want to reduce it down and make it too jammy. And then, what, what do you do next with this dish? Um, we have some, some pig snout um, and, and pig ear. You know, pork is, is one of my, uh, my, my favorite proteins. You know, it has big flavors, but it's, it's very versatile. There's a meatiness to it. There's some collagen, there's some, some fat that when it, when it plays with the, the sugar and the spices like it will soon, um, it, it's just amazing. So this is obviously not an ear straight off the pig, right? It's, you, no, so you treated this a little bit first. This, is, this has been cleaned and then we cooked them both um, in, a, in a pressure cooker. Am I gonna need to worry about Snot. The only thing you may have to do with, with some of the pigs, a little, a little bit of grooming, you may see a, a few hairs there on the snout. You either take a, a razor you know, and, and shave it just like you would your face, or you can take a, a little uh, torch and, and burn those hairs off. When it comes to the flavor difference between the snout and the ear, is it there's a big flavor difference, or are they still pretty similar? The biggest difference I think that people will note is, is texture. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the snout, it's softer, it's, it's more fatty. The, the ear is a little bit more chewy, has some bite to it. I mean, I think that the mixture of the two together are great. I go a little smaller with the, with the ear than with the, the snout because it is you know, a little bit, uh, a little bit chewy. Chew. So we're gonna add some of the ear into our pot. Then we're gonna let it kind of braise a little bit longer. It's cooked all the way through, but you just wanna incorporate the, incorporate the flavors and, mm -hmm. and let the two you know, really play together for a minute. And so is this something when it comes to like the way you're preparing this, where do the influences meld on a, on a dish like this? I think the technique from you know, using a, a pressure cooker to get the, the most extraction of flavor from, from the pig is coming through more classic kitchens. But using the trompa, using that, you know, that snout, using the, the sweet potato, having that spice, that's all more of you know, my own personal, familiar kind of taste profile and, and background. When you're cooking the sweet potato like that, is some of that flavor leaching out, that's why you want to use some of that in there? Yeah, you, you try to keep that connection, you know, mm -hmm. because obviously the, the sweet potato is not only taking in flavor, but, it, but it's giving out. It's best when there's just a, a, a smooth kind of conversation between the two and you're like, wow, this is, this is really great. So who would say was your most influential person growing up, like when it came to you wanting to cook and learning to cook? It was my, it was my grandmother. Most of my, my days were, were spent at her house. When I think of a kitchen, you know, and, and what it should smell like or what it should sound like, you know, it, it, it's her house. When I taste something, you know, I was like, oh wow, that, that's familiar, that reminds me of Christmas or after school or you know a certain a certain age or my younger brother like this this dish and you know I did and you know something like this is right up you know uh, her alley and I think you know my, myself and, and either one of my grandfathers would have loved to uh, you know share a nice pot of, of, of this so we're gonna take the sweet potato out of the liquid we're gonna give a little bit of a cut like how I do my baked potatoes kind of like you do a baked potato <laughs> exactly and then you just kind of smash that it opens and that up. purple color is absolutely developed in there. It's so, so you can see when it's you know it's it's locked in some of that purple. It's absorbed some of the uh, the syrup. And we'll take a little bit of salt and just put it in the in the center to to season the you know the cavity of that sweet potato. And now that's ready to go. I'm gonna taste. I could use a little bit more verjus. And what exactly is the verjus? It's um, the first press of. Um, white grapes, so okay. it's sort of like a, almost like a vinegar, but not um, as sharp. Okay. With the sugar and then like the fattiness of pork, it's like it could really get heavy after a while, right, if you're not brightening it up. Exactly. So the last sort of form of, of brightness is parsley and chive that kind of go back into it. Like this isn't just a tiny garnish of parsley, this no, is you, really... You, you <laughs> want it, now you want some of that, that herb and that flavor. We've got the sweet potato that's been primed, just a nice hearty spoon. It doesn't need to stay inside of the, uh, the potato itself. So it's very much a loaded baked potato here. 
That's what I was just thinking. It's like, <laughs> this is like when I'm at home and, you know, just throwing some chili on a baked potato for dinner one night. <laughs> so there it is, pig snout chili. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and there you go, there's our camote, broken Spanish. Let's give this a try. try. You gotta eat it too, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not shy, don't worry about that. All right, let me dig in here. You wanna try to get the, uh, the potato and the, the meat, a little bit of the juice, a little bit of everything. With the, um, with the pig's ear, you can get, definitely get a little bit of chew and it adds like a great like contrast to the snout, which is much softer. It almost gets kind of creamy. It does. It's and definitely got some heat too. I, I think it starts with sweet and then you're like, oh, where's the spice? And then all of a sudden, boom, it hits you. There, there, there it is. The spice is, the spice is catching up. But it's not, <laughs> it's not too hot. It's not. Let me get you, you want some water? No, I'll be strong. I'll be strong. I'll be strong. Sure? No, I'm good. Well, I'm just going to keep pigging out. Yeah, I know, please. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Pig, the pig mask. This is... Um, Nightmare fuel. I mean, for, I love it. This is the face. And we use the ears, of course, because ears are delicious. And then... Where, oh. where did my snout go? There oh, he right is. Right here. You see the little nostrils? <laughs> Don't pick his nose. <laughs> it's rude. I know, right? <laughs> the tongue is right here. No. That's the tongue. That's the tongue. Inside are the cheeks over here. Okay. And, and that's like deliciousness. Deliciousness right there. Right there.